the Joe Rogan experience. And man, have you heard of hyperbarics? Yes. This I know is... um, Uriah Faber used it quite a bit after his fight with Jose Aldo. Yeah. When Aldo fucked his leg up. Yeah. And his, his leg swole up real bad. I'm telling you, this is one of the biggest game changers. I love the float. Mm -hmm. uh, go in float tanks. I've done it at least 50 times. Um, at Float OKC in Oklahoma, my wife and I, that's our date night. Once a week, we go and we do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I float fight week at least twice a week. I really believe in floating. Um, hyperbarics is unlike anything I've ever done and felt immediate, long-lasting benefits from. Like how so? What does it uh, make you feel I like? get better sleep than I've ever gotten. Really? That was instant almost. I mean, I noticed it the first night. The second night, I've done over 20 treatments now of mm. hyperbarics. You get in the tank. Um, you put on an oxygen mask and, and they fill the tank up with oxygen and you lay there for an hour and a half to two hours. Some people only takes an hour, but I'm bigger and they take me to a lower depth. Mm -hmm. And then my ears kind of mess up on me a little bit on flights. Um, they kind of get clogged up or whatever. Because of the hyperbaric chamber? No, it's just, they've always done that on planes. Okay. And so it's like you're in a plane when you're in the hyperbarics. And what it does is it pressurizes the oxygen down into your cells. So it's literally going into your mitochondria. That's what the new studies are showing. The mm. oxygen gets in there and it promotes healing. And in your brain, it literally brings blood flow into every part of the brain that needs it. So it's one of the best things after a concussion. Ah. So I was with Raiden and what's, I'm one of those guys that sometimes thinks um, everything happens for a reason, you know, or there's, there's not a lot of coincidences. I had just started hyperbarics two or three days before I met Raiden. Then I'm doing it, and they're saying it's one of the best things for concussions. Raiden gets a concussion from one of those fights, um, or maybe it was one of the ones that wasn't on the fight, but they diagnosed him as with the doctors and his mom and his dad. Whenever the doctor says, I think he really has a concussion, did some testing on him, wrote a prescription, and said, hey, I really think he needs to do hyperbarics. That's one of the best things for concussions now. And I was like, I just started. And so literally that day, the doctor hands him a prescription for hyperbarics, and then I take him in there and get hyperbarics. And this is probably the story I wanted to share with you about hyperbarics the most. There's this kid named Caleb Freeman, and he just made NBC Nightly News, um, I think Fox News and ABC. Um, he's making the news everywhere because of his comeback story. The kid probably should have never been able to eat again on his own, especially never be able to walk. His parents were told that he would be left in a vegetative state. And if you have that Caleb Freeman video, because number of one, what? he got in a vicious car accident. 16 years old, he had just started driving. He was the number one cross country runner at his school, but also in his district. And then he got in this brutal car accident. Here's the video of him trying to learn to put up the finger number one again. There's a, he's trying to do a one. That's his dad kind of coaching him. But he was the number one cross country runner. Now he's trying to get him to do a thumbs up. And this is all from brain five. damage. Yep. Traumatic brain injury, driving down the road, hit, hit a, uh, what's it? Hydroplaned, mm -hmm. got in a brutal wreck. Um, and they thought he would be left in a vegetative state for the rest of his life. So you can see right here, his muscles are so atrophied mm -hmm. because he had been in like a, I think he was in a coma or he was, um, in the intensive care for so long. Um, and so his dad's trying to get him to do a thumbs up, you know, he's, he's trying his hardest to do that. If you can go to the second video, um, and they're telling him you should really try hyperbarics. They try everything you can. And so the whole community has rallied around him in Oklahoma. Um, he's from Newcastle, where one of our board members are from. And they're trying to help him learn to walk again, assisted. I don't know what they have him in here. Did he break here. his arm? Yeah, he broke his arm. Did he, he fall down his and legs. break his arm? Because in the other picture, it seemed like he didn't have a... Um, I actually don't know. Post-accident? Yeah, this is post-accident. So maybe this was before that other video. So um, which video are you trying to show then? Um but trying to show you both of these because this is how far gone he mm -hmm. was. And then after 40 hyperbaric treatments, they say, get him in there. It'll flood his brain with oxygen. Right. When it has the oxygen, it'll reproduce uh, the blood flow and that'll bring actual healing into his brain. And so that third video um, is right here. He's literally, he was the number one cross country runner at his school. So now he's trying to learn how to do cross country again. He wasn't ever supposed to walk again on his own. He came in there to the hyperbarics, assisted like you saw, uh, where people are assisting him on both sides. He does 40 treatments of hyperbarics. And then all of a sudden he walks up and down the football field 14 times unassisted. Nothing changed. Um, just 40 hyperbaric treatments. And so the doctors are like, you got to keep doing this. Yeah. Yeah. That next video is actually him. That's a um, JPEG. 
Oh, that's us at Hyper Barracks with Raiden. That's the young man that got the concussion on the right. And this video right here, I don't know if there's volume, but uh, this is actually a pretty special video. This is after 80 treatments. He's literally finishing his cross-country run again. And wow. he was never supposed to walk. And that's after like three or five miles. Wow. Um, and so... And how's his ability to communicate? Is that coming back as yeah, well? Yeah, he was actually texting me uh, this morning. He texted me that picture of us and Raiden. Wow. Um, and his, his dad actually forgot. He goes, he goes, where, where do we take that picture again? And, uh, or I don't have it saved. And Caleb goes, it's in your phone, dad, just look. <laughs> and so he's, he's able to recollect a lot of different stuff. That's amazing. Um, so this is all something that you're, uh, experiencing as well for your, yeah. your treatment for the parasites. Yep. And, and I, I've, I've literally never gotten better sleep. I feel more positive when I come out of it. Um, and then I feel like I can focus better. Because one of the things that they saw in my brain scans where I have PTSD and then I have real uh, severe ADD. Um, and they can see that on the fu- how my brain functions. I guess there's like eight different types of Dude, ADD don't brains. don't put me in one of those fucking things. <laughs> I don't even want to know. I think you need to do it. I don't even want to know what's man, wrong with me. Dr. Amon's awesome, man. And so then I, I have that. And then so going into the oxygen, they can see from scan one to scan two, mm-hmm. how my brain is actually functioning better. And uh, the spots with ADD have kind of cooled off a little bit. Um, the spots with PTSD have literally kind of gone down a little bit. Um, and so that was Caleb's story. There's also this girl named Eden Carlson. And Eden Carlson, there's like a minute clip um, on the New York Post, and they did it on YouTube. This girl drowned for two hours. She was facing float down in a pool or face down in a pool. Her mom pulled her out of maybe 15 minutes. She drowned for two hours. She didn't breathe. She didn't have a heartbeat. Um, and then at the hospital, they miraculously got her back. Her story's what? all over. If you just Google Eden, she was dead for Carlson, two hours, two hours, Eden Carlson, E D E N Carlson. Um, she's the first one to, uh, have brain damage reversal scientifically proven they've done all the mris and wow. cat scans from and the hyperbaric from hyperbarics so one of the first things they now? need to do for she drowning normal? victims i mean i think this is worth trying to pull up one of those videos um it's new york post eden oh, okay you can't post the plays that but literally um there's an eden carlson video on youtube <clears throat> and it's wild to see how she's recovered and how they told her she would never be able to eat again, never be able mm. to go to school, never be able to do that. Now she's basically a normal now, little girl again. Look at her there. Yeah. So cute. Right there. What a little smile. That's amazing. Her mom is like a huge advocate for it now. That's incredible. And, uh, now, But with you, what do they have to do? Like they have to find out whether or not the parasites are still in your system, mm-hmm. identify the parasites because it could be an unknown parasite. Right. Well, they know it's schisto. And if I've had schisto in me for as long as they think – they don't think it started in April. They think maybe that was another, not an onset, but, but took it to another level mm. when I went there and got sick. Um, and it was brutal. I mean, I was hugging basically the, the, the uh, not the toilet, but the um, uh, the latrine mm-hmm. um, while I was in Uganda in April uh, in May. Now, I mean, I was just so sick. This hyperbaric is helping you, yep. but you, you're still not able to train right now. Like you're not, you're not like, you don't have a fight scheduled anytime. I don't soon. have a fight scheduled, but I would like to fight first quarter of next year if I can. Is that literally possible? I mean, if well, you're not six months from now, I have another follow up appointment here um, uh-huh. in March and we're going to have a lot more data to show like from my blood work to my and, and bacteria in my stomach mm-hmm. um, to uh, those brain scans are going to be the big thing that show um, how my brain has started to heal, how my body started to feel, right, um, and show my health just increasing. And so that's the goal. I'm on this mission to get, get healthy um, so I can fight again, but also just so that I can function better yeah. um, and have like not these big swings. So um, the hyperbaric downs. chamber is helping you, yeah, big but time. yet you're still feeling some serious yeah. significance. Well, I side just effects. started the hyperbarics a month ago. Okay. So I'm 20 treatments in. I need to get um, 40 done as soon as possible. Um, and then they think I'll probably do another round of 40. Um, and then, yeah, I, I, I mean, seeing how, how Caleb's doing, mm-hmm. I mean, Caleb told, Caleb showed me this. This is wild. I come in and I'm uh, about to get in the chamber with him and he shows me his hand shaking. 
and he's showing me, I don't know what that's called, but it's whenever, um, uh, is that when Parkinson's and different stuff? Like you have those kind of mm-hmm. shakes um, you can, in your hand yeah, for sure. uh, or Alzheimer's or whatever that is. Um, so Caleb's got that and he gets in the chamber 90 minutes later, we get out. He shows me his hand and it's completely steel and he can put contacts back in his eyes. Whoa. But before there's no way at all that he can get contacts in his eyes. Afterwards, his body's calmed down enough. His brain has enough oxygen and blood flow in it that he can put his contacts back in on his That's own. That's insane. Yeah. So Raiden, um, his parents say that he was always up and down in the middle of the night and that they would have to try to put him back to sleep. Um, and now he just, once he's asleep, he's asleep until they wake him up. Um, they think it's helping with his autism, his diabetes, um, his AC1 levels or whatever those are called. Those have started to come down. And what the doctors have told us is like, there's nothing better. The doctors take a oath that say to do no harm. Mm -hmm. Like that's first and foremost is to do no harm. And they're like, if someone has a concussion or if someone has autism or if someone has, um, this bacteria or a parasite that might be in the brain, why not flood the body on a cellular level? Oh, you're going to love this part that can increase your, your stem cells by eight times in your body. So it's one of the best treatments for whenever you have the stem cells injected in you. Mm-hmm. So I had the MSCs, the mesenchymal stem mm-hmm. cells from my hip, put in my shoulder. Mm-hmm. They said one of the best things I could have done for it would have been to get in a hyperbaric chamber because that would um, promote the stem cell growth and mm-hmm. life of the stem cells because they're cells and you're pushing oxygen into the cells yeah. and increasing blood flow into it and you're extending their life and helping wow. them reproduce. Damn. So it's one of the best things out there, Joe. I, I wouldn't be talking about it like this without uh, Raphael is getting into it. Joe Namath. Joe Namath has his own um, clinic now for hyperbaric. Yeah, he's doing that to reverse his brain trauma from yep. football, right? I right. read about that. Right, and it's the first time there's ever been documented cases of brain trauma reversal, where if you can heal your brain, you can basically heal your life. Where you have a healthy brain, you have a healthy life. Dude, we need a hyperbaric chamber in here. Do That's they what have I'm them? saying. Can they, yeah. You buy portable units? Yeah, absolutely. I mm-hmm. use something called a Seacrest, which I think you would really like. It's the hard chamber. It's mm-hmm. glass. You have one in your house? No, but the Seacrest one, or there's Joe Namath doing it. I think Michael Phelps does it, you know, getting in the water. Look at that. Wow. Literally, it's wild at how how much stuff it actually so what helps. what's the prognosis like with you with the doctors that, that, that have looked for parasites they're doing yeah. all this blood scan do they think that they're going to be able to straighten you out they think so yeah they think they think with doing a holistic approach where medication can come in um at a later date i had this doctor that's oh you have ptsd here's these pills mm. oh you have depression here's these pills yeah. Uh, okay. Now, now you're starting to have anxiety for the first time in your life. You've never had it before. Here's some more pills. Um, mm, oh, course. you think you have ADD? Here's some more pills. Right. They put me on three or four different pills at the same time. I started feeling that? like a zombie. Yeah. Uh, like a zombie. I felt weird. I felt like I started having like electricity running through my veins or something. Like, like uh, my muscles started twitching. My eyelid was uh, constantly spasming. So you d- the doctors that have um, looked at this all the different various ailments that you have like and they don't want you to do pills Mm -hmm. so what what do they want you to do and what do they think is going to be able to happen they think you'll be able to fight again are there um so dr amen he's a guy that says man our brains are the literally you can live uh, they can do lung transplants right and heart transplants and kidney Mm -hmm. transplants like you can't do a brain transplant right Um, and so he's saying that anyone that's in a brain damaging occupation, and he said, whether that's fighting football or even being a firefighter, because that is a brain damaging occupation. You're breathing in burning couches, which are putting off all these harmful chemicals. Mm. Um, and so he said, you want to protect it and promote your brain health as much as you possibly can. Right. Um, so he's a brilliant guy and, um, he's going to be on weekly calls with me, guiding me, uh, keeping me accountable on how am I protecting my sleep? How am I, what am I getting to eat? Uh, you know, also supplementation of what's that one that you were on here with David Sinclair talking about? NMN? Uh, it's like that. R- rolls. Resveratrol? R- yes, that one. Yeah, it's not a drug. It's an uh, antioxidant. A yeah. Okay. Well, that plus some of the other things that you guys mm-hmm. were talking about, like they're all in his um, supplements where he tells you, go get these supplements from here and here. 
and make sure that you're optimizing your brain health. (laughs) 